Hi, it's Camila and today I will be showing you the brushes I use in Krita for inking and some tips how I make the ink look more realistic or traditional. I post a new art video every week, so if that's something that would interest you, consider subscribing. And if you'd like to see all of my finished artworks, check out my Twitter. To start off, I always create a new layer for my inks. So I click the little plus button on the layers menu, I change the name to ink and then I put the layer on top of everything. Then select the brush tool to start your inking and on the top of the box you can find some categories of brushes. So for example Krita has this ink category ready to use, so if you click that then you can see all of the ink brushes you can use. So let's see, all of those brushes are more like liner brushes. They are great for some things and I often use them for different purposes. Depends on what I want to do. So all of, the, all of these brushes are really great depending on what you want to do with them. Next you can select all of the brushes and go down a little bit and then find those brushes with those blue inks. All of those are the watercolor brushes that Krita offers. So you can also put them in one category. For example, I use those brushes quite often, so that's why I created a separate category called watercolor and then I put all of my brushes there. So besides using those brushes to do watercolor digital art, I always use those for my inking because as you can see, they have this realistic brush effect. So if I mix all of the ink brushes from the ink category and then add some splashes of paint from the watercolor category, we can create a lot of different inking looks. If you cannot find some of these brushes in your Krita, I will add a little card button in the corner of the page so you can check out official Krita YouTube channel and there you can find all those brushes, you can download them and put them in your program. All of them are free, so if you're missing some of those brushes, you can just download it in the official Krita packs. Before I start inking, I try out different brushes on a separate layer. I always do my inkings on a separate layer. I often also add more layers as I go for inking. So before I do everything, I select the brush I, I like and then I proceed to do my inking. So I will show you now a time lapse of the first layer that I do. I don't really have a one way of inking. Sometimes I do the more harsh lines first and then I go back to the more paint style of inking. But sometimes I do the opposite, so I first do the painting and then I add more lines, more harsh lines with the ink. So this time uh, first I, I decided to go with the watercolor brushes to do like more soft inking and then I moved on to more opaque lines with the other inking brushes. So as you can see, I use multiple different brushes depending on what I want to do and how I feel about the painting. So there is no really right or wrong, you just go with whatever you want to do and whatever you like. Also try out different approaches to the ink. So if you press harder your pen then the the color will be more saturated and if you do a quick stroke then the color will be lighter 
So if you play around with that, you can create a lot of different effects that are quite realistic looking. Then for my next layer, I decided to go with more ink, more traditional ink. So I also separate all those layers with ink. So it's not always on one layer. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. This time I decided to show you how you can create this kind of effect in a more safe way. So if you don't like a layer, you can always delete or erase some parts. So as you can see here, I'm going back and forth with my brush just to see what works for me. There is no really one way to do it. Well, it's digital art, so we can press the Ctrl Z. Well, in Krita it's not Ctrl Z, it's something else, but <laughs> you get the point. Now to create this kind of watery effect, as if someone would splash water on your paint, on your ink, I use this one watercolor brush that is perfect for that. What I always like to do for this kind of watery effect, I have two blurring brushes added to this tag. So I like this one Q-tip brush. It blurs everything so it looks like someone poured water on your paper. And for inking it's perfect if you want to blur out the background or for example some parts of the drawing, you can do that with this kind of brush, it's really useful. And that's basically it. Those were all of the brushes I use for my inking, depending on the painting. Sometimes I use different ones, sometimes I mix them, sometimes I use one layer, sometimes I use multiple layers, sometimes I add those blurring brushes. So those were all of the tips that I have for you for inking, for achieving this more traditional inking look because you can also use those watercolor brushes to create inking lines. So those were my tips. I really like using those watercolor brushes for black ink. Maybe try them out if you would like. Let me know how you like them and see you in my next video. Bye bye.